All right, we're live once again. <laughs> uh, today's episode, we're I got a request from a lot of people on Twitter of doing another narration of a Batman story, and it was after the Hollywood Night one, so we're gonna do. Uh, Three different. Ep- we're gonna do three episodes because it's three books. Frank Miller and Lynn Varney's Varnley's The Dark Knight Strikes Again. DK two, as they call it. <laughs> so it's kind of an interesting book, and I talked about it once um, a while back about how I oddly grew to appreciate the Dark Knight Re- uh, Dark Knight Strikes Again. I was going to say Dark Knight Returns, but this is a sequel. And the artwork in the book is very <laughs> very weird. But in a good way. I kind of view it in a good way. It's a weird book in a good way. So, let's see. This one is... Oh, it's book three. So, we're going to start with book one, of course. DK2, as they call it. Because literally, that's what that's what it is. Like You wouldn't even know if it's a Dark Knight Strikes again. Because all you see is DK2 and Batman's fist in the air. <laughs> So, for me, it was it was really weird because like the first time I encountered this book was I was hunting for the Dark Knight Returns book because a lot of people are like you got to read that one if you want to read a Batman book that is like changes everything you got to read Hello you got to read the uh, the comments by the way for those who don't know um, you got to read the Dark Knight Returns, and I've been looking for this book, and all of a sudden I call up this bookstore, Barnes and Noble, which is almost going instinct when you think about it. They're overpriced, <laughs> so I was like, I'm looking for this book, The Dark Knight Returns. Instead, they grabbed The Dark Knight Strikes Again, and when I starting reading it, I was just like it's not bad in a way. I mean, the writing's kind of out there. And it's not a bad book. It's it's one of those books where you look at it you're like, what is Miller trying to say? Because in Dark Knight you know, Returns Miller was trying to say a lot of things. You know, Miller was saying a few things about Reagan and war and how society has become <laughs> I'm looking at my back window and I see a certain black cat sitting in a chair looking at me through my window. Him and his orange buddy. <laughs> so, anyway. So we're going to start the... Uh, a lot of people always say, like, the... The Dark Knight Strikes Again is a bad book. And for me, we're going to read it and we're going to see how bad it could be. It's been a while since I read it, believe it or not. It's been, I think, since 2012 I've read it, so yeah, it's been a while. So anyway, let's start off. This is Batman's dialogue. It's been three years since In the eyes of those who live above, I died. I've been patient, very patient. 
I trained my students and honed my skills. I've waited. I've waited and watched the world go right straight to hell. <laughs> I love that. When I first read that, I was like, that is badass. <laughs> So we're going to the stock reporter. The Dow Jones soared past 50,000 after this. Then a woman, I guess reporter, you want it. Just listen to the just listen to that son of a bitch. The state of the union is strong, stronger than ever been. Truly, they are in the best of times. Careful there, Olson. Curfew violations plummet nationwide. Sure, it's strong, like an iron fist. The female reporter, I guess. I guess it's an ad. It's been a while since I tried to figure out what the hell it is. You must have it. I guess the president is like George W. Bush. Because <laughs> the book, I think, came out in 2001 or 2002. Both house, house, houses of Congress rise in a standing ovation for President Rickard. Thank you, thank you. You're too kind now. Taking some of... Take some doing... Yeah, take some doing. Like repealing the Bill of Rights, Olson. We have sponsors to think about. You can't stop thinking about it. But we are we have arrived. We are at peace. And you can have it. Of course we are at peace. We've killed just about everyone who disagrees with us. Our children live in a world of free of crime. Our children live in a damn police state. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> our... Per, oh, sorry. Our... Prouncers and beyond the dreams of previous generations. And we all pay, we are all well paid slaves. Who will stop this? You ha you can have it any time, day or night. My patience is at the end. The time has come. It's safe, it's legal, it's ultimate high. I want to know what the hell Miller was thinking while writing this. Because Miller is one of those people that he he's one of those people like I, I love Frank Miller's work mind you. I love Sin City. Batman Year One is like my all time favorite Batman comic even though there's some people who hate it. Fuck him. Fuck those people. I love Batman Year One. It is just... It's one of those books, like, I am, like, waiting to, like, do a, a narration. But I don't know which one I want to do, because I have the... the uh, first prints of Batman Year One. And I have the trade paperback. I might do the trade paperback, because I'm so... Because I have all the prints, like the first printings of it, in a case, in a comic book case hung on my wall, where I just look at them for some odd reason. I guess it's just because I love the cover arts of it. Like, I love the... I had the um, trade paperback when the book of that version that came out a year after the first printings of Batman Year One, so. It's really. <laughs> it's a really good book, and I love it. I, it Dark Knight 2, I. 
Dark Knight Strikes Again, or DK2, as it's called on the cover. It's a weird book. <laughs> it's one of those books that I just... I, I, I find it weird in a good way. So, so anyway, back to uh, this ad. It's a commercial ad, believe it or not. So let, our, let us service you. We'll never let your stocks go phallic. Euphoria Investments. <laughs> I, I wonder if Miller wrote this because back in the day and still to this day like some some ads they do it over sexualized back in the day not now because the Me Too movement kind of put it to put a stop to it. I mean for God's sakes there's an exercise bike they did which wasn't even there was you couldn't even like tell what the hell was wrong with it. This woman recording herself on the exercise bike, and a lot of feminists got mad because they thought you know they accused in the ad the husband fat shaming the wife by buying her an exercise bike, an exercise bike that she wanted. And she recorded herself like every day doing the bike thing and thanking her husband for buying this bike for her. And the feminists and the, you know, me too, the feminist women are like, he fat shamed her into buying, you know, going exercise and all that. It's like, what the fuck? It's an ad. It's an ad. And the weird thing about it was the actress who did the commercial, who became famous from it, agreed with them by saying she felt uncomfortable and the guy who played the husband who they attacked for the ad simply said like you're all looking too deep into it it's a commercial for a bike then they replaced it with um, a guy who's fucking annoying who sings while riding the bike and stuff you know one thing I want to say real quick is I notice in commercials now they dumb down men in commercials. They dumbed them down. Like they're one-minded individuals. And and as a guy, I find that sexist. It's like, can, can us guys be smart in a commercial? Why do we always have to look like the fucking idiots? Like us regular-looking dudes. And stuff. Like, why, why do we have to look so stupid in commercials? You know that I mean I mean I've done some stupid things in life. I fell on the porch and fractured a wing <laughs> wing part of my spine, like I which hurt by the way. Which I'm fine now. I mean it was a it was last year or so, like two years ago. But why can't we be smart in <laughs> commercials? Why do we always have to be stupid? It's like this bathroom commercial. We're going to get back to the book. Where the guy was like ready to like redo his bathroom. Instead, this, the wife calls the bathroom fitter dude to fit the new bathtub in it. It's like, why? why the, the commercial was stupid. It was stupid. Like, what the, what the fuck is the point of it? If you knew you were going to redo the bathroom, you could be like saying to your husband, by the way, we're going to call the fat... Uh, the, bath fitter dude he's gonna put in the tub over the old tub and it's gonna be fine why do you all of a sudden like we're gonna redo the bathroom and all of a sudden he has a sledgehammer and his you know dumbass buddy and like we're getting ready to destroy the bathroom <laughs> like th these commercials are stupid and stuff it's like enough with these commercials anyway and the weird thing about it, like one thing I want to point out, it, it kind of comes down to movies. It comes down to you know movies and stuff. Even romance films are sexist. <laughs> Here's a fun fact. It's like those. Um, it's like those uh, films. Uh,
Dear John and stuff. The Nicholas Sparks shit. Here's a fun fact. You're never going to find a dude that's in safe haven. Alright, you're never going to find the Josh Dumel and the Channing Tatum of life, ladies. You're going to find the regular looking dudes, the Will Ferrell types, the Kevin Hart types. Alright. And the whole idea of these Nicholas Sparks romance stuff is bullshit. It is complete dog shit. None of them are real. There is no town called Safe Haven. And there's no way, you know, someone's going to, you know, send a letter and it pops up and appears in a mailbox and it's Keanu Reeves behind it. Ain't going to happen. So enough with this entire, you know, fictional romance thing where you think you're going to meet the hunky dude from Magic Mike, but it turns out to be John Goodman. So enough with it. I don't even know what the hell I'm saying, but it's just a rant. But the point I'm getting to it is everything's stupid. Let's get back to the comic. Olsen. Jimmy Olsen talking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I know, it's just... It's a rant that made no sense. But I had to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta point out some of the feminists didn't even st uh, stick up for Roseanne they they threw poor Roseanne under the bus and we ended up getting that horse shit show the Connors which was stupid I'm sorry Sarah Gilbert is no lead actress she is no fucking Roseanne She's not funny. She's not amusing. She's not relatable. She is not Roseanne. Okay? The only reason I got rid of Roseanne was because she supported Trump. That was it. And I miss Roseanne. She was funny. And I can't believe I got rid of like the, the episodes of Roseanne. Like, you can't even find a show to... You know, the new episodes that they did. Like, the the true final season of Roseanne. Instead, we got the stupid Connors. And it's like, why do you even have John Goodman in the show? You, you have him as a background character. And I, and I, I, I like John Goodman. He's, he's a fellow, you know, St. Louis. And it's like, that, that dude deserves better. It's like, how dare you put him in a background? He played Fred Flintstone in the Flintstones. It's like, how dare you? How dare you? Treat that poor guy with no respect. You put him in a background, and, and you, like, not even a two seasons after Roseanne died, you have him hook up with, you know, um,. Katie Seagal from Sons of Anarchy and Married with Children in the show. It's like the guy's wife died and you, you immediately get bam. Have him hook up with Peg from Married with Children. Anyway, let's get back to the comic. Like I said, Jimmy Olsen. Maybe you've all forgotten out there. Maybe you think they or urban legends, or just costume clowns. But they were men and women with amazing abilities, unbridled courage, who battled tyranny, defeated it all at every turn, defeated it at every turn. What happened to them? 
Who are they? Where are our heroes? I have to admit, like, some of the artwork Miller did, like, his artwork kind of changed over time. I think it's, I think as he got older, he sort of, like, appreciated, like, new stuff and wanted to try new things, which you really couldn't blame Miller at the time because artwork was, like, changing. It was, like, an evolving thing, and he, he sort of drew things different, like, um, he drew them, like, almost like a mixture of like Japanese artwork and yeah a bit of like it has like a a bit of like an anime look to it like a bit of of it and he draws it like very raw and very edgy a bit Somewhere on Earth, somewhere cold, endless cold. A man laying on the ground looks up, where monsters dwell, and sees a, t a giant tentacle arm. Where men pray, one man alone. Savages. Sorry. It's a new comic almost. It's like I haven't read it and it's like been on the shelf for a while. <laughs> Savages Savage his humanity but Savage his humanity and all but forgotten. A warrior born. He hasn't eaten in days. He doesn't even look bother to cook it. He is beyond shame, beyond hope. He eats the monster he killed. <laughs> the giant tentacle arm. He eats it. I'm just saying. Alright, I'm trying to give you a picture description of it. How long has he been here? In hell. How long? Years? No way to tell. There's no daylight. No sun. Not even a moon. Only darkness and cold and the sea and its beasts. The sea stretching out of sight. Every direction. The endless angry sea. It's like he's the only man in the world. It's enough to drive a man mad. Huh? The man looks and sees a light. From the sky, like the glare of some wrathful god, probing, searching, light. Maybe he has gone mad, but he has to know. He stands up. He has to know. Better to die than go on like this. The man swims out to the light. Better to die. The creature grabs him. He fights, swinging his sharp sword. He is unafraid. He has faced foes larger than himself before, much larger. He battled. Bohethians and Lathiathans thousands of times. And should this thing be the death of him, he will surely he will surely remember him. His ribs flex, his legs go numb. Yet the water warms. The god's glare finds him. And from it falling, salvation, power. The power.
power, the strength of a titan. No air left. No time to swim to the surface. Need to swim. But he doesn't need to swim. He simply stands. Rising to the sky. He breathes a deep of freedom. And still he rises a colossus. The atom. <laughs> Standing on the glass, a girl leans down. Welcome back, Professor Palmer. Gary Kelly, as Catgirl, said, Where am I? You're in a laboratory. The enemy used your own technology to imprison you. You've been trapped in a refrigeration unit, stored along with experiments in marine microbiology. Palmer, the bastards dropped me in a damn petri dish. Palmer leaps up. And by the way, I, I should mention, the dude is naked. Like, he has no clothes on. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. You, you think they would have him, like, wear... I don't know, something. But no. He leaps up and sits on... Carrie Kelly's shoulder. A naked man is sitting on her shoulder. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Palmer, and who are and who would you be, sweetheart? Caroline King Kelly, sir. Bruce sent me. That'd be just like old bats sending in a kid. Kelly. I'm hardly a child, Professor. I'm 16 years old. I know what I'm doing. She's Catgirl in this comic. Like, she was Robin in the first book, The Dark Knight Returns, and she becomes Catgirl. I don't know why. It doesn't really explain why. All of a sudden, alarms go off. Security alert. Breach level 86. Priority alpha shoot to kill. All these alarms are going off, by the way. Kelly, oh shit. That wasn't supposed to happen. Get really small right now. She moves and Palmer falls. Chucks. Chucks, Palmer says. Give me wheels. Wheels. Her shoes turn into roller skates. <laughs> She's wearing bad shoes, by the way. Oh, I still don't get the Chucks part, Palmer said. I am not... I am no... I am not toast. I am a trained professional. Trained by the best. I, I had to point that out. I kind of laugh about the shoes thing because I'm thinking like Frank Miller must have saw like one of those shoes back in the day where I don't know if they still have now like they have wheels on them and you could like run and all of a sudden you hop on the heels of your shoes and slide across and you know from the roller skate wheel. I don't know if he saw that he goes that is really neat. Get into position, Kelly said. Chuck's motor. Palmer, motor? <laughs> I guess it's like Simon says. <laughs> it's nothing but a whole lot of men with guns looking to kill me. I've handled this before. 
I handled this type of thing before, dozens of times. Oh. I get it. It's a verb. Dozens of times in simulations, anyway. Palmer falls forward. Kelly catches him. Don't be concerned, Professor. You're in good hands. Over there is a girl, the guard says. Relax. There's no difference between this and a simulation. The same rules apply. No difference. Except if you catch a bullet in the real world, you're toast. Stop it. Don't think like a loser. Over there, I got her. Guard yells. You're not toast. You're a trained professional. What? I've got her. One guard yells. Relax. It's easy. It's easy. Do it right. Do it right. I kind of get confused about the one thing. It's like, usually like word bubbles for characters have like certain colors, but all of them have black and white in them. Just pointing it out. Go for the head. Break his jaw. It can be fixed. Don't break his neck. But bring him down. It's easy. Piece of cake. Bring him down. Keep him down. <laughs> I love how Miller writes things. Slick work, kitten. Palmer said. But we still don't have the joint to ourselves. I'm well aware of that, sir. Everything is under control. Gets smaller, a lot smaller like an aspirin pill. One guard. You little bitch. You're toast. <laughs> I love how Miller writes things, by the way. Chucks, but first it. But Chucks... But first, peel it. Oh, peel oh. What is with the outfit? Who cares? Blow her, blow her in half. Young enough to be your daughter. Relax, it's easy. Like falling off a log or top of the skyscraper. Twenty Billy and close Ace the cloak Chucks suck back the wheels. I'm gonna point this one thing out, then we're gonna read it first. What are you doing, kid? Oh no. I'm not liking this any more than you are, Professor. But I need both hands. She puts a naked Professor Palmer in her mouth. He's shrunk to an aspirin pill. She tosses him in her mouth. His entire body in her mouth. What the fuck? I'm just pointing it out there. It's like, when I first saw that, I was like, what the fuck? And I'm thinking, like, who came up with this? It is completely insane seeing that I am not kidding she puts a it, that was like the stupidest thing I've ever seen ah boy we're already 16 pages in and I'm like what the fuck am I reading like, I couldn't have gotten the whole... Couldn't got the big light bulb. To get myself a pocket and put him in. A trained professional, I figure. She leaps down. Twenty. Tweety. Right in, right in place. Right on time. Relax. You're only about a mile up. Gulp? Oh, hell. She swallows Palmer. She's 
she swallowed a naked dude. <laughs> I'm just going like this. Oh, shit. Splat, splat. Splat. Uh, they're firing at her. She jumps in the bat thing. Gross, I swallowed. I think I'm... I swallowed. I think I'm going to hurl. Yeah, it's just like... Anyway, this was just like... <laughs> 16 pages in. Anyway. On the top news, a daring assault on Palmer Le Lebertor uh, la Laboratories. Assessing the situation, President minced no words. Stolen were materials that could be used for biological warfare. We must reclaim them. National Security Enforcement Director Bill Prick. <laughs> I like my name, by the way. <laughs> I gotta give Miller on that one. Props on that one. I have to suggest that the work... That this was the work of agents from a rogue nation. No Olsen. I will not tell you what evidence... Who do you think you were talking to? You little putts. In sight of the crisis, the president has extended state martial law into the 19th month. That's the story they want you to hear. But the happy hackers do not. Happy hackers got the real dish. Check this out straight from the lab surveillance system. This little number of foreign territory, then I'm a guy. And I know I'm not a guy. <laughs> I don't get what Miller's point was in this writing. Bruce, you maniac, you damn fool, what the hell are you what the hell are you doing? It's not you. I know it's it's you. I know it's you. Nobody else could be so good at being crazy, you damn fool. This wasn't the deal. This wasn't the deal. Oh, it's Superman. In the background, talking. That's right. Adventure lovers. Your digital darling is online. This is some woman talking about... <laughs> this, this is the weird thing about it. They come up with these characters in the background, and they don't even have a name. Just, I've got the goods. Just look at the chick let go, <laughs> dodging bullets, <laughs> leaping tall buildings, defining death. Some of these characters are like fucking weird. And the best of all wearing tights, it's, I guess it's supposed to be Black Canary, I guess. There's, I guess it's supposed to be Black Canary. It's been a while since we've seen this kind of action. And it shows, like, the cat girl. What makes you wonder is something's in the air, doesn't it? Superman. You were supposed to lie low. You were supposed to stay quiet. But you let her wear the tights. You let her wear the tights. Ah, oh boy, here we go. Superman shit. I've been negotiating with Palmer's release for months. We've almost come to terms. Now have you gone and made a crime of it. And you are on your way to be making a horrid mess of things. You don't know the stakes. You don't know how many millions of lives hang in the balance. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. Yeah, because no one doesn't want to listen to your stupid shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a Superman fan, by the way. We all pay for this. We and 10 million innocent. You see, why do you drag in the innocent? It's on you, dude. 
your arrogance will bring atrocity and genocide. Condition red. Motiv motivate power at zero. Our directional systems are shot. Houston, we're going down. Of course, I have to show Superman saving a spacecraft. Don't tell me who's who's on the side of the angels, Bruce. I gotta save lives. You don't. Arrogant shit. What the hell was that? We've hit something big. But there's nothing hit to hit. It's impossible we're slowing down. It's not possible. This can't be happening. This used to be so easy. Alright, this is another one of Frank Miller. He created news thing for <laughs> this comic. Are you ready? News and the nude. Where has female <laughs> female news people reporting the news and nude? <laughs> this book is like utter brilliance. I don't know how this film. I don't know how this has not been made into an animated film yet. It should, because <laughs> this is crazy. It, the thing is, people shouldn't even look back on it with like such disgust of like this comic shouldn't have existed. No, this comic is brilliant. <laughs> You're seeing the ramblings and craziness of a madman writing. <laughs> and it's brilliant. <laughs> I mean, we got... We got... You know... Cat girl swallowing a naked Adam, you know... While saving his life, and she vomited him up. <laughs> I don't even know where Miller... I, I, I just... I wish people would ask Frank Miller, like, what inspired you to write The Dark Knight Strikes Again. Like, what gave you that inspiration of, like, writing it? But anyway, let's get back to the comic. This is the uh, female reporter for News in the Nude. Despite total technical failure, a spectacular landing by the space shuttle Rodham. No casualties are reported. Not even a scratch, the space... The astronaut says with the thumbs going up. Coming up, giant asteroids threatening the entire human race. <laughs> Batman. My cave. My endless, bottomless cave. An old friend. Ray Palmer. The Atom. <clears throat> the Atom. Are you kidding me? I've had a haircut and a shave. I even had a hot shower. I've had my first cooked meal, my first decent night, a decent night's sleep in two years. And I am not living in a petri, and I'm not living in a petri dish. You bet I'm ready for action. Palmer said. Batman. Good. I've had quite a tale to tell. And we have have a world of work to do. Palmer. Just like old times. Hmm. No. Not like old times. It's a whole new ball game. More of the news. The end of the world. It started all innocently enough. A test of the controversial five trillion dollar planetary defense system. A nuclear warhead was launched to the interception of a massive asteroid that possessed no convincible threat to the planet Earth, but something went terribly wrong. <clears throat> <clears throat> A 
A warhead is missing. Its target by miles. None. None of it detonated, kicking the asteroid from its natural course, sending it hurling right at us. <laughs> this story is just weird. <laughs> I read weird shit in my time. <laughs> this story's still like it's crazy. The artwork's cool though, I'll I'll admit. Joining joining us is six planetoid specialists. Planetoid Planetoid Specialists. Alex Axelrod. Doctor what if it hits? <laughs> it sounds like something CNN would ask. The consequences will be biblical. That honker's size of a meteor. A honker's size of Manhattan. If it hits, we can kiss the dinosaurs hello and kiss our sorry asses goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I added the kiss or sorry ass goodbye because I'm sure that's what Miller was wanting to write in there. <laughs> oh, shit. We'll be right back with wider coverage. And this reporter <laughs> and this the, the nude the news and nude the camera pans down and shows part of her ass and says, don't miss an inch. <laughs> I, I'm starting to like this book. <laughs> this book is so stupid. I'm actually loving it. Oh my god. There he is. Don't wheeze, Carrie. <clears throat> Sir, may I speak for you for a moment, Carrie? Kelly says. Shows Batman working on something. <laughs> sure, kid, what is it? I just wanted to say I've always admired you. Oh, sorry, she's talking to Palmer. I've always admired you as a scientist and a champion of justice. I really am sorry that I puked you up like I did. That wasn't professional. Palmer, you, did, you didn't do so badly. You accomplished your mission, don't, didn't you? You got me out of there and there's... You got me out of there. You've got talent and guts. You should know. Her guts puked up. Thank you, sir. He's at full size, and he's still not tall. Not that... Sorry, he's still... <clears throat> I'm still looking at the other panel of the page. <laughs> he's at full size, and he's still not that big. Not at all that big. <clears throat> sure, he's only a foot taller than me. I don't say a word about his haircut... <laughs> <clears throat> Palmer, think you're ready for tonight's action? It'll be intense. I better be ready. I'm field commander. Bat boys hit the battle stations. We go operational in 15 minutes, Bat boys, Palmer said. Yeah, they hate, they hate it when I call them that. You got attitude, too. It takes attitude. You'll do it well, Palmer said. I've got one request you would... I've got one request if you would out respect for your elders. Palmer shrinks down as he says it. <clears throat> Ray Palmer, the Adam, he gets small. 
Let me pick my own hiding place this time, okay? Kelly, yes sir, of course. Now back. <laughs> Miller must have loved writing this crazy shit. The news and nude. Back to the killer asteroid. Speaking to reporters, the president exuded his unnatural level of confidence. Almost like he knew something we didn't. I, I sometimes wonder. I, 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 I wish I was a fly on the wall of the DC, the DC's editorial team when they look at this and they're like, we got to publish this. <laughs> This is like the craziest stuff. But anyway. There's no call for panic. We got it under control. The reporter. The press conference suffered a bit of bizarre interruption. Keep in mind that you're about to see is not a transmission error that took place in front of, of live witnesses. You media folks blowing this all out of proportion. Here it comes. We still have several days to take out that hunk of rock. Blink, you'll miss it. Basically, transmission like interrupts something and <clears throat> says some weird gibberish we've got powerful resources to deploy Superman flies in the sky <clears throat> what was that what happened the woman reporter says as she covers her breasts with her hands <laughs> I sometimes wonder what Miller was really thinking when he came up with the story. I, I, I really want to know. Pandemonium broke out. Secret Service agents were... Secret a Service agents prevented what happened to be, physic, to be physically assaulted on the president. Maverick journalist James Olson. Jimmy Olson. This is bullshit. That's exactly what I said when I started reading half this book. <laughs> you ever notice he never shaken anybody's hand or kissed a baby? A savvy operation like Rick? Ricard? Have you ever wondered why? You've got your answers now. He doesn't exist. <laughs> The President of the United States is a computer generated image. The reporter of News and Nude said. I'm surprised it's not real, by the way. Strong. <laughs> I'm surprised no one has not taken some of Miller's creations and brought it into reality. Just throwing it out there. Strong words. If Olson's right. Who's holding the joystick? Lex Luthor, who looks like a... Who is a... I don't even know what he is. He's like a big... Shrek-looking motherfucker in this one. If this happens again, I'll break your scrawny neck myself. Olsen coughs. Oh, sorry. The... Sciences coughs. I swear it won't happen, sir. Our team will find the glitch. Luthor, that's good enough. He needs a whole new program. Reformat the president. And while you are at it, spike up his compassion levels. He needs, he needs coming across... A little cold. Now, get out of my sight. The Secret Service agent. Sir, what about Olsen? We got him on a felony. Release him. Freedom of speech is a wonderful thing. 
So long as nobody's listening. So long as nobody's listening. The world spins mad. The people are intoxicated by luxury. Have they forgotten everything that makes us more than house pets? Reason, truth, justice, freedom, the human spirit. By the way, this is uh, the question talking. The human spirit is shattered, pain glass, wrapped soft vent, soaked in surgery poison. Evil has seduced mankind, and mankind has shown all the chemistry of a three-dollar whore. Miller in his words. <laughs> Yet I will not yield, I will not bend, I will not accept the corrupt new a corrupt new way of things. Nor will I blah 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 blah. Basically, he's saying, I will have no evidence, documents, or ever foul lie. I will... F Basically, he's going after the president and show trying to expose Luthor for his crazy things. It's basically like what he did with... Um, in the Justice League animated series, where he tries to show that Luthor has gone... Compl you know, Luthor is behind everything. Uh, must be typed. Computers can't be trusted. They've tied into now the connected to the powers of tyrants. Kind of like today. Um, once your thoughts are on, your thoughts are committed on to a disc. The tyrants have it. The abyss stares back. The minds of men must be re reclaimed. If not by this generation or the next. And someday, some decade. It's not in my power to affect the change. I have, I haven't the might. I am not the answer. I am only the question. Distant thunder. No, not thunder. Battle sounds. It's Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> Olsen's the question. Man, Miller and his news reports. Special report, massive explosions rip, ripping across the power complex, threatening electrical supply for the East Seaboard. This could be the second terrorist attack on the nation, on the national security in less than a week. At the scene, Lana... Harper Lane Lana how do you how do things look from the ground it's utter chaos down here chip security forces are all over security forces are so overwhelmed they haven't had the time to chase us away out of the way <laughs> <laughs> Security forces. This is it, Clark. No more skirmishes. No more comprehends. No more comprehenses. No more deals. No more secrecy. No more silence. No more pretending that we don't exist. Not one more lie. The damn consequences. The war has begun. Up there, what are those things? Get the camera on them. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kind of having fun with this book a bit. Oh, the craziness. The bat boys are flying through the sky. Life's Life is electricity. Hence my little gizmo. Uh, a well-placed, a well-collaborated power source can disrupt any electrical activity. Even more, even the human nervous system, my little gizmo, works better than a nerve gas. 
Too bad it doesn't work on Kryptonians. But I've gotten some other sweet tricks planned for you, Clark. Cat girl. That was the easy part, bad boys. Now beat the feet. We're going in. Herb, that cannon up ahead changed its mind. Intruder targeting blast. Oh, sorry, I forgot to read the other thing. Sure thing, Commander. Confidence is high. Command signal received. Enjoy your stay. Wait, hold on. Oh shit. Uh, something just happened while reading this. There are two cop cars and an ambulance at my neighbor's house. Oh. Now people are fighting. Holy shit. Dude, I, I know, it's like... I live in Gotham, by the way, for those who don't know. Last year was fucking crazy. Like, there's an old episode somewhere of these people, like, going at it. When I was trying to sleep, and all of a sudden I hear, like, you know, people fighting. Anyway, uh, we're going to get to part of the book. This book is pretty long, so... Um, I'm going to read a couple pages, then we'll wrap it up before it gets too crazy out there. Look sharp now. Uh, look sharp. You know the orders, Carrie said. Play it loud and be hard. Stealth, be damned. It's showtime. Emergency, all oh, personnel, sectum, you know. Basically saying that people are intruding, shoot to kill. This isn't a solo mission, boys. Give me some cover, Carrie said. Lethal force required. Shoot. Kill. Kill. One bat. Soldiers. Kill the stick boards. <laughs> the security guards have been taken down by the pap boys and giant explosion. One yells. Bitchin' debut, Don. Wicked bitchin', Rob. <laughs> and the guards screaming as they fall. Carrie goes down. Says one thing. Everything goes. Here goes everything. No excuses, no turning back. Fear is for losers. You just swallow it. I can do this. Just like the sim uh, just like the simulations. It's easy. Piece of cake. I really don't want to die, Carrie said. Alright. Then we're gonna wrap up this page and we're done for the episode. Cause this is fucking crazy out there. She's heading right straight for the core, Rodriguez. Activate all defense systems. Hit her with everything you've got, Rodriguez. Oh, and the guy look, looks. Oh, Jesus. What the hell? What in the hell is going on? Son of... Son, you really don't want to do... You really don't want it now. You... Oh, sorry, son, you don't want to know. Oh, no. It can't be. You're, you're dead. Punch right in the face. <laughs> Alright. So, anyway, we're going to wrap this episode up. Um, 
we're on page 39 for this book. Um, kind of insane what happened out there while reading. I didn't even notice until I saw like flashing lights. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I hear my neighbors yelling and stuff, so... Anyway. Uh, I'm kind of happy about this episode. We're doing The Dark Knight. <laughs> the Dark Knight Strikes Again. I'm sorry, I'm like looking out my window and I'm like, what? And... Uh, I see the black cat running up the hill. <laughs> He's looking at me. Yeah, dude, you're the one who caused it. <laughs> so, it was an amazing episode. Thank you. <laughs> like, I'm not making this up. Anytime my neighbors act like that, the entire cats will, like, watch, then turn around and go back to the. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm seeing my I'm seeing my black cat named Romeo, like looking at me, and he's like running up the hill. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, I kind of I'm excited to read some of it. Like, uh, I, I enjoy like some of the funny parts in the book. Like. I, I look at it, I don't... I, I look at it as, like, in a funny way. I don't look at it as, like... Miller created something, uh, you know... That is a... Uh, what is the word for it? A abomination. I look at it as sort of like a funny... Kind of funny, cringeworthy writing... Of a comic series. And I... I really enjoy it, and I... You know... It's kind of a fun read. Some of it, I just sort of go like, wait a minute, did that just happen in the book? <laughs> did that really, like... Some of the stuff, like, I don't know how they got away with it. Like, the news and dude thing. Like, that, I don't know how they got away with it. Because that is just brilliant and funny. So, um, anyway... Uh, I th we're definitely going to do like tomorrow's episode. Um, we're gonna fin we're gonna try to finish up this book because <laughs> some of it I just had to like stop and like look at and like laugh and kind of joke about. So anyway, uh, tomorrow we'll do part two, and uh, I am still doing some research on the. Pamela Huff case. And yeah, so anyway, I will see you all tomorrow. And uh, thank you so much for listening. It's kind of it's a fun story. I enjoyed the <clears throat> the Hollywood night um, story. And yes, my throat is kind of breaking up because I have a cold. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, we we will definitely do the Hollywood Night story. Uh, sorry, do the Hollywood murder mystery stories, the Natalie Wood one, and someday. <laughs> I enjoyed talking about the Hollywood Night one because there was like a lot of people who were sending messages about how much they like the story and the Al Penny character and other stuff so yeah that one was fun <laughs> so uh, you know anyway I will see you all tomorrow and uh, yeah bye hold on I gotta send a message real quick 
It's just a cold. <laughs> Don't worry, I already took, um... I already took some medicine for the cold, so... I'm not, like, coughing or wheezing or anything, so it's kind of... I'm good, like... <clears throat> so, anyway. One thing I found out... I gotta talk about this one story I found. I forgot to talk... I wanted to talk about, um... The... I know I was supposed to wrap up the show and stuff and say bye and hop off and stuff. Um, I wanted to talk about the crazy story that happened in Tennessee and stuff. It was <clears throat> a fairy attack. This is on Phantoms and Monsters, by the way. A fairy attack in Roan Mountain, Tennessee. This one was kind of crazy. So here it is. Emily Blunt and talk of fan of uh, and talk of the Marvel and talks with Marvel over the possibility of Fantastic Four. Okay. That news article thing just popped up. So <laughs> my all right. This is a story someone sent on Phantoms and Monsters. My aunt's ashes were spread along uh, the trail next to her next to the river in Roan Mountain State Park in Tennessee. I have pictures of the odd energy spiraling from the day my family spread the ashes. The photos are of my cousin's young children that was six years ago around twenty thirteen. I visit the spot every summer because I live about two hours away and I've seen strange things. These are things I do not believe in. I was walking along the spot one year with my other aunt, the sister of the one who passed away. We were attacked by this tiny, by a tiny white fairy type creature. I do not believe in fairies. I don't either. (laughs) I do not know what it was. It was a tiny white body with wings. All white. So there is no black fairies, I guess. Um. (laughs) It's a joke, by the way. All white and small than a dime. We both held it and took pictures with our phones. Both phones show bare hands. I have seen shadows in the water of all humans of humans and heard whistling and laughing. laughing. They had no source. I tell people this and they think I'm crazy but it's all true. My aunt was a tortured soul. I hope it's not her energy. Maybe it was there before. Uh, one person, uh, the person posted the article. No, uh, part of the maternal grandmother's family is from the area on the, on, are from the area on and around Roan Mountain. I've heard strange tales since I was young. And a little surprise to me anymore. More. It was it a little would be surprise surprise me anymore. Um I don't know what to think of this story. <laughs> I mean there's some there's a lot of weird things that happen in state parks. Like that like I talked about before. Uh for example the missing four one one story, uh, the documentary I talked about where I reviewed it and encouraged a lot of the listeners to watch it, which is available on YouTube. Um, there's been a lot of weird things that happen in national parks that um, a lot of people don't really talk about 
disappearances, odd activity, and weird things happen in state parks. Um, for me, I I am a firm believer that things do happen in state parks, like some weird supernatural activity. But the thing that always, you know, intrigues me is the bizarre disappearances of people and national parks and state parks and all that where they are found but have no memory of the activity of them disappearing and some disappearing and never being found the only things that are found are artifacts of clothing and shoes and stuff I mean like in that documentary that I, I, I talked about they found the boys clothes and the father has the clothes and showed it on camera to the documentary film crew and the people of the state park was like well he could have been attacked by a bear or you know a, you know mountain lion mountain lion that's what it was and the dad said like an expert who expert of mountain lion saying that if he was attacked his clothes would have been shredded to pieces and there was no tears or shred you know animal attacks to the clothes that the boy was wearing and all these things have been kind of a weird talk about like the one case the one case for example that was fucked up like the parents should have stayed with the kid that was the weird thing about it even to the point where like the one woman who was being interviewed had a belief that the parents did something she didn't like say it but she kind of hinted at it where when I was watching I was like the parents must have done something because one if they did not trust the guy that the grandpa brought with him why the fuck would you leave your kids with them that is the question and the mom of the kid really didn't have any emotions she had the same amount of emotions that Robert Wagner had when Natalie Wood drowned. She had no zero emotions of her child gone. Like, you know, most, uh, you know, when kid disappears, the mom is immediately like, we gotta find this kid, we gotta find it. Because the, there's that motherly lion lioness instinct like the mother cat instinct I will say because you know the mama cat is sort of like protective of the babies and stuff which I should know I nearly got attacked by a mom cat <laughs> when I was trying to pick up a kitten nearly got attacked by a cat so <laughs> I immediately I immediately put the cat down and backed away like but anyway usually they would have that like instinct and stuff but the the mom of the kid just really had no no emotions or feelings whatsoever even in the interview like there was like zero belief it's just my opinion of the case and my opinion of the documentary of interview and stuff but anyway i highly recommend watching the documentary and stuff because it is one of those documentaries like i am obsessed with it almost like the uh, Chris Watts case uh, where I believe that this is my opinion of it because I watched like a doc I watched a documentary of it yesterday um, and I do believe there's some fishy things that is in that case that I believe that investigators never never really looked into mainly his girlfriend that he was having an affair with I believe she was involved in that case in the murder and stuff but you know it, they're never going to reopen that case but they should I mean there's a lot of weird things in the security cameras from the neighbors and even the body cameras that the cops were wearing while they were looking around the house and the backyard and stuff I mean there's a black SUV that is like behind the house from a far distance you could see and the black SUV driving past the house and stuff like there's a lot of weird things that is in that 
the footage and stuff that they really should look into and should they should have been asking like what the fuck is that you know and and a guy carrying a shovel walking you know past the house and stuff while you know while police were you know talking to the guy there's a lot of weird things in those dash cams and body camera footage that they really should look into it's just my thought and stuff uh, for those who don't know, when I'm not doing the show, I'm kind of researching true crime stuff. I Usually when I'm researching things, I immediately find something else and I research into that. I basically, um, how do I put it? I, I juggle two things while I'm researching <laughs> and stuff. So anyway, uh, yeah, I really want to do like episodes where I'm talking about true crime stuff. Maybe once we're done with like Dark Knight Strikes Again book one we'll do the true crime things and then get into book two of Dark Knight Strikes Again then you know repeat the pattern <laughs> type thing so anyway um, I'll be back tomorrow we'll be finishing up the book and stuff of Dark Knight Strikes Again book one so anyway I will see you all tomorrow tomorrow